Hello, everybody. Uh, here we are in um, uh, in Lausanne, and we are welcoming today Carolina Hesse Almada, who is a Colombian lady, uh, and she has today an extraordinary story to tell. Um, just to introduce you, I am Guy Horn, uh, and I am here in Lausanne uh, at the heart of Sportworks community where um, we have had a whole series of excellent speakers over the last few weeks and really good audience numbers of interest, especially during this time. We've had a lot of um, business-related, solution-related ideas for sports marketing. Today, we will have elements that you can take away from the sport business, but most of all, you will take away pure inspiration and pure awe and respect for what a team of Colombians supported by others have achieved. And I hand you over to uh, Carolina uh, Hesse Armada. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining from all around the world. Hola, mis amigos en Colombia. And uh, very happy to be sharing with you today the story of our expedition to Mount Everest in 2010 and uh, show how teamwork and innovation were key elements uh, for success. So for me, all it started back in 1985 uh, in Bogota, Colombia, where I was born. Um, I saw an image of a um, climber in the top of a mountain and I was completely fascinated. So I asked my parents to take me to climb a mountain and uh, so it took us uh, about five days just to go up to the border of the glacier at uh, 5,000 meters. And uh, well, of course, I was a bit dizzy uh, with the altitude, but I was uh, completely happy. And although we didn't go to the summit uh, because we didn't have the equipment or the guide or anything, I felt like I had uh, reached my dream. So it was about uh, 20 years later when I was uh, working for IBM, where I worked for nine years. Um, and I decided that uh, I wanted to go climbing mountains in uh, South America during six months. So I traveled from Colombia to Argentina and ended up climbing uh, Mount uh, Aconcagua, almost 7,000 meters, uh, the highest mountain in America. And from there, I knew that um, my next uh, goal was uh, the Himalayas and uh, Mount Everest. So I got in contact with uh, the organizers of this expedition uh, in uh, uh, 2010. And um, the organizers were Marcelo Arbelaez and Juan Pablo Ruiz. They are both uh, pioneers of climbing in Colombia. They have uh, they had already summited Mount Everest in 2001 and many other mountains in the Himalayas. And uh, they were also great uh, leaders and entrepreneurs. Uh, they had a, created a company called Epopeya Colombia to transfer the lessons of uh, mountaineering into the companies and, uh, you know, for people development and team development. And they explained me that uh, the mission of uh, their next expedition was only to support Nelson Cardona, who was a very strong climber who had all the mountain records in Colombia. He had all, also been to uh, mountains in the Himalaya. And he was training actually to um, climb Mount Everest without oxygen. He was a strong candidate to, to reach that goal. And he had uh, an accident. He fell down a cliff, like 18 meters, and he had multiple uh, fractures and um, surgeries. And at the end, the doctor said that uh, he wouldn't be able to walk again. So the only way that he would um, be able to, to bend his knee and do sports again was if he would undergo amputation. So that's what he decided to do. And of course, he was completely devastated. It was a very, very tough moment for him. He even thought about committing suicide. But uh, surprisingly, three years later, he was uh, already as strong as before, and he was ready to climb Mount Everest. The 
But uh, the goal of this expedition was not only to take him to the summit and back. It was uh, also about giving a message to a whole country of how you can overcome challenges and uh, how you can, let's say, with strong will and determination, uh, reach your goals. So teamwork and innovation were two key elements that were represented in the investment model, value transfer, inclusion, and awareness. And I'll explain you each of these. So the investment model. And so instead of having only one sponsor, as in the previous expeditions, this time uh, we had about 10 um, executives and entrepreneurs from Colombia, the ones in, uh, in the red jackets, who actually help connect collecting the funds through their own companies or through their contacts. And at the same time, they would cover the cost of the Everest expedition, who was the, the team in uh, gray jackets. And uh, they would also participate in the leadership in action program, which is uh, the next point. So uh, in this program, they will learn how to climb mountains. They will be, uh, let's say, be able to train with the team, the Everest team, to climb mountains. And uh, they would uh, actually climb Mount Lobuche, a 6,100 meter mountain in the Himalayas next to Mount Everest. And uh, they will visit the Everest team in base camp after the climb. And uh, inclusion was another important element of this expedition. There was uh, well, a person with disabilities also, um, I was the first woman to become a base camp manager. Um, yeah, be part of the organizing team. And there were two young climbers. So this was um, kind of a knowledge transfer opportunity and also a kind of a torch relate to the new generation, next generations. And the awareness was also very important for us. We were conscious of the impact in the environment. And uh, one of the companies who helped funding the expedition uh, made it uh, carbon neutral. So what we did is we, at the end of the expedition, we went all uh, planting trees uh, in the surroundings of Bogota. And uh, this was the, the team, the team to climb Mount Everest. Uh, Nelson is on, on the left. Uh, he was always uh, very strong and with a very positive attitude. Juan Pablo, the expedition leader, uh, he was taking care, of course, of the strategy and he had a great sense of humor. Um, Rafa and uh, Tonio, they were uh, more in charge of the technical part and they were supposed to um, support Nelson in the high altitude camps with the equipment, the climb. I was uh, in charge of the communications. I was at a contact point with Colombia, with the media, and uh, well, sending, receiving emails and reports, sending some photography, and well, and uh, taking care, of course, of all the equipment, satellite models, modems, cameras, and uh, my, my favorite part of the role, uh, international relations. And there was Albert Bosch. He's, uh, he was not Colombian, not from our initial expedition. He was a um, Catalan who was uh, also going to climb Mount Everest. He's an extraordinary adventurer and leader. And uh, actually, we, we kind of adopted him, and he ended up being a, a key member of our team. And well, other key members, uh, probably the most important ones, um, the Sherpa. The Sherpa team, they were helping us uh, with all the operations and logistics in base camp, the food, and uh, also the climbing Sherpas were carrying up all the loads to the altitude camps and setting up tents up there. And also, well, they would climb with each of the expeditioners that, was, uh, that were going to attempt the summit. 
So, well, before showing you the route, we will show you a short video to introduce you to Mount Everest. This is um, a trailer of a documentary that was filmed while we were there um, in Everest 2010. Base camp is a fascinating microcosm. You've got the Sherpa culture and the climbing culture. It's this constantly changing environment. You have people who want to climb the highest mountain in the world who have very limited climbing experience. Today it's uh, going not good. Oh, shit. So now there's dozens of expeditions and hundreds of climbers. It's like everybody's mountain. Los médicos me dijeron no puedes volver a las montañas, cuyo objetivo principal es escalar el Monte Everest en situación de discapacidad. The ice melts and then the glacier moves. What garbage we couldn't see last year has come out this year. More bodies are coming out. The death rate of everybody that goes down the mountain is one in forty. That's still higher than most people would want to accept for a holiday. Camp two from base camp over. A lot of uh, foreign climbers understand how much of a spiritual place this is. Anyone who comes here will have to be humble. If I have a group of people at sea level, I take them to the summit of Mount Everest, they'll all go unconscious within two minutes. <laughs> We don't belong here. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I think so. <laughs> uh, so now we'll um, show you the route that our team had to follow. Uh, so from base camp, you first uh, need to cross uh, the Kumbu Icefall, which is the most uh, dangerous part of the climb. Many people die there. And um, then it's about five to six hours to get to camp one. And, and then before, well, I should say that uh, people usually have to go up to these camps several times or just climb other mountains to climatize before going for the summit up tent. It, it, this process could take about maybe three to four weeks or four or five weeks. Um, then uh, from camp one, you go to uh, like about three three hours to come to a uh, six thousand four hundred meter. This is uh, where I got the chance to to climb up to. Then uh, you have a steep, super steep ice wall face to come three, which can take five to seven hours. Then from there to the south call, which is camp four. Uh, it can be about, uh, I don't know, three to five hours. It, it depends. You're already in altitude, so it, everything is uh, slow up there. And then from the south call, people usually do the summit push to the summit um, at 8,800, 550 meters. They go back to sleep to the base camp and, and then down as soon as possible. So this is our base camp. This is where we spend most of the time, about, well, two months in, in total there. Um, this is where we had, you know, uh, to plan the climb, the strategy. Um, we were reading weather reports and, uh, yeah, of course, climatizing until the team could go up again um, to start the climb. And uh, this is the Kumbu Icefall. As, uh, as I said, it's between camp, base camp and camp one, the most dangerous part of the, of the climb. And now you see why. This is just a huge labyrinth of uh, block ice, ice blocks um, that can fall anytime just beside you. Actually, one block fell down next to um, 
Rafa Antonio from our team, they felt like it was like, like an earthquake and they will luckily they were only covered by the snow powder but it was quite scary and uh, yeah you have to cross uh, multiple stairs which are also very unstable and with the climate change uh, of course glaciers glaciers are changing a lot you have big crevasses so you need to be very careful and here it's you can see really how important was the team especially for nelson because he uh, this was um, I mean this, he didn't have any sensitivity in his food and uh, therefore yeah it, it became more challenging. This is camp one, almost six thousand meters from here. You can already see Mount Everest on the left. I mean we cannot see it in the photo because it's just huge when you see it in front of you. Um, from there you cross the valley of silence until camp two it was also very important uh, during all these process to stay in contact with the other expeditions because uh you, you needed to discuss the strategy to avoid crowds up there and also for you know the safety of the people And uh, to go up to camp three, you had to cross the this blue ice wall. It's about uh, one kilometer uh, high, and um, it's very difficult because crampons don't stick very well into the well. The ice, of course, it's get very slippery, and it's so steep that um, yeah, well, it's easy to have an accident. Actually, Nelson, uh, he uh, there was a moment where he's um, processes start to fall down. I mean, he thought he was losing his processes and he managed to grab it with the other foot. Uh, but it was, uh, yeah, really another scary moment. And uh, camp three, almost 80,000 meters, you're entering the death zone. Here, Tonio from our team had to descend to base camp because he started uh, to have um, edema. And um, yeah, the rest of the team continued going up to uh, camp four from from where the team would uh, do the summit uh, push. However, here our expedition leader Juan Pablo he had uh, already developed a pneumonia, so he had respiratory issues. He couldn't uh, join the team up to to the summit, which would be his uh, third summit. But he was then in contact communication and leading uh, through the radios from Camp 4. And then uh, they started the summit, summit push at 8 p.m. on the 16th of May. And well, above that zone, it's, it's really, really tough. Uh, you know, the conditions, the, the, the climb itself is very tiring, especially at night. You, you, don't see anything but they had to get to the summit ideally before the sun came out um, and after 15 hours they reached the summit of Mount Everest here's uh, Nelson and Dorji Sherpa uh, Rafa and Albert came out uh, later on came up later on and um, well actually it was a very, very emotional moment when I received the call in base camp. Uh, it was, yeah, super, super excited. But uh, at, the, at the same time, I was a bit scared because they had took much longer. They had taken much longer than uh, they should have. And there was a very short window of time, like weather window, which meant that on the way down, they could have, uh, you know, big storms. So luckily, um, well, everyone, everything went well, but here you can see Nelson in the descent. I mean, summit is only half of the way. And the, the descent is the most dangerous part of the climb because then you're tired and you have been exposed to the altitude, but also to the cold and to the wind for a long time. And it's very easy to, to have an accident and to make mistakes also. Here it was particularly difficult for Nelson because his leg has a, had a, an open wound 
due to the friction with the prosthesis and he had to remove it and he had to stop several times because just he, he couldn't stand the pain. Uh, luckily, Albert was, was with him and his Sherpa. They, they also had some incidents with the oxygen. They were a little bit tight with that, but uh, happily they managed to go back to camp uh, for before, uh, let's say at 8 p.m. So it was 24 hours journey. Then they went down, everybody was uh, congratulating them. And of course, uh, it was great to have them safe and sound here um, in base camp. And the big surprise was uh, to have the 21 uh, executives and entrepreneurs um, who had uh, found, you know, collected the money and the resources and who had climbed Mount Logutra, the 6,100 meter mountain. All of them got to the summit just the day before Nelson. So we all met in, in base camp and it was also a very emotional moment. So now we'll play also a short video. It's a summary of some images of, of the expedition. ¿Cómo fue la aproximación desde Katmandú acá al campamento Barcelona? Bueno, llegamos a Lucas, demoró aproximadamente unos 40 minutos y luego del Lucas acá llegamos a Lucas, que es un pueblo que está a 53 kilómetros en 7 días. Nos encontramos ya en el, en el campamento base de Leveres. Además, Muy bien, pequeña. Son casi 90 grados. Si no le falta voluntad para pararse y seguir adelante y subirse tan alto como hasta la cima del monte Everest, que es donde hoy estamos parados. ¿Saben qué? Y que iba a Colombia, carajo. Okay, so um, in the meantime, all the media in Colombia was uh, turning to the expedition and to Nelson. And uh, well, we were happy to see that the purpose of the expedition um, had been met and also that uh, all this message was being spread to every Colombian and they were getting inspired by the story of Nelson and they would uh, get encouraged to overcome challenges and uh, reach their goals. And I would like to finish with uh, this photograph, which shows the, the spirit of the expedition, where we definitely can show that we can do together 
many more things that uh, we can reach alone and also that uh, we can overcome challenges if we work uh, as a team, but also that the dream of one is the dream of all of us. So thank you, that's it. Guy? I can see you. Good. That was, um, we were transported. I think everybody listening was, was transported uh, 8,000 miles away. Um, we have a lot of great questions, and a lot of them are about the fundamentals, the logistics, the operation of of what it was like, uh, questions also about how you mentally prepare, physically prepare. So I'm going to dive in here. I've got a question here from Renata Roth. Um, how do you prepare? How much beforehand are you preparing with all your materials and your supplies? And how much do you combine knowledge about the weather and all of that when you're already at base camp? So what are your main plans and is there any flexibility in your plans once you are there? So how do you prepare? Uh, well, you have to, of course, have a very good uh, cardio and endurance, uh, you know, ability. Um, you have, a, well, yes, a normal training, uh, like every, I guess, uh, elite athlete. Uh, biking, running, of course, climbing mountains. You need to have also the technical skills, uh, rock climbing, and also, well, all the experience in the glaciers. I mean, this for these, uh, well, it take it can take several years. Uh, and also you need to learn from the mountains. It's not just going up there, you know, it's not like a, a only a technical thing. It's, it's also about uh, the strategy, about decisions that you need to make in the mountains. And these are things that you only learn with experience. And uh, with regards to the, to the plants, yes, of course, you need to be adaptable. You need to listen to the environment. And uh, this is why uh, for example, people like, like uh, Juan Pablo, people who have been a lot, uh, you know, climbing mountains, and they they will, of course, need to, um, let's say, need to adjust the plans according to what you see, the weather, the, the weather windows, the kind of amount of people climbing the mountain at the same time. There are so many factors that count uh, on, on these decisions. Yeah, and, and we could also see you, you dealt with two team members. Um, you know, um, you had uh, one with Tony with an endema at Camp 3, um, and then you had Juan Pablo with pneumonia. Um, did, was there infrastructure to get the support, or did you get support from other teams, or how do you cope with those um, medical situations? Well, luckily, um, yes, we had, uh, let's say, a, a strong team, um, especially the Sherpas were key on this on this stage because, um, well, Juan Pablo, I mean, we had to know that the main objective of the, of the expedition was that Nelson would climb up to the summit and go down. Um, no one else had kind of, you know, the, the right to go up to the summit if Nelson would not do it. Um, so in this aspect, um, let's say it, we, we found solutions. Nelson went up with his uh, Sherpa and uh, um, Rafa went also up uh, with his Sherpa, although they were not uh, climbing together, but well, there were some, some issues also with oxygen and some things, but um, Fortunately, Juan Pablo managed to communicate with them from Camp 4, and then everything was, um, yeah, assault. A question from Miguel Cutet here in Lausanne. Um, his question is about the photos, the images, looks like the team is very united and engaged together and, and very supportive. Um, and you must have had some very difficult moments during the expedition. Um, 
what are the most important lessons in terms of leadership and teamwork that you have learned from this expedition? Um, well, I guess communication is the most important thing here. Um, from I mean, from the very beginning, be clear on, on the objectives, on what we want to 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 reach, and and also, well, the good thing about about this team is that there was there were um, coaches facilitating the experience, so it was much easier for all of us to you know like at the end of of the day or at the end of the training, um, to process you know everything that had happened maybe just personally or uh, with the team. And uh, this was a, an element that definitely counted uh, at the end of, of the, 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 let's say, to get uh, positive results. And a question from Nadia Bonjour, uh, also here in Lausanne. Um, was there any recognition or acknowledgement in the Colombian media of, of you being a woman and your role as a, as a female uh, base camp manager for the expedition? Well, no, I don't think so. I don't think it was uh, kind of relevant uh, compared to the, <laughs> the story, I mean, the rest of the story. Um, but I'm happy that uh, at least the, the first three Colombian women who had uh, submitted Everest three years before, they got a lot of recognition. And, of course, I wanted to be one of them, but well, some circumstances didn't didn't match with the timing. Um, but yeah, I know in my case, uh, actually, I just realized about this uh, when I was doing this presentation um, that um, I think uh, I mean there were other four women being part of the um, Lobucha team, and um, yeah, I think it it, it was anyway uh, the the. the team effort was recognized more than an individual effort. And a question from Tatiana Jimenez here. Um, your mental preparation, your mindset, you must have had some big challenges. You know, you, you were as base camp manager, um, if anything goes wrong, they're going to come to you to fix it. So how did you prepare for the mental challenges when you were there? Well, well, no, I mean, I think, uh, uh, no, I didn't have actually <laughs> such a responsibility. I think it was more the expedition leader. Yeah, that, that, um, how do you prepare for that? I mean, I guess you, I guess it's, it's the mountain who teaches you that, that when you go up there and, uh, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I would have a you know like a special specific formula for that. <laughs> yeah. And with Nelson as the main star of the show and the objective, as you very very clearly stated. Um, Sorry, guy, could you please repeat that? With, with Nelson as the star, as with Nelson as the focus, for him to summit was the main focus. Um, where was his role? Was he always the leader in terms of uh, making key decisions? Or was the team able to discuss and give different ideas and different thoughts? What was the dynamic for making decisions? I mean, there was a big uh, consensus always. Um, of course, the expedition leader uh, you know, has to put all the topics over the table and, uh, and discuss. And this is where, for example, um, of course, Nelson's opinion was very important, um, but also the, the rest of the team, uh, especially one, one situation where we saw this is in, in the, um, uh, let's say, decision to go up to the summit. Uh, there was a very short win uh, weather window, and uh, we were conscious that it could represent a big challenge for Nelson specifically because you would need to, he would need to go fast. And uh, we know that probably that would be a challenge. However, um, yeah, Juan Pablo just raised the topic and asked everyone involved how, um, you know, like how would they see this possibility, if they would feel comfortable to do it or not. And uh, 
of course, this is what uh, at the end uh, it happened. And Nelson said, yes, I can do it. And um, they, they made it. Yeah. And I think if we take your experience in 2010, summiting Everest, and if we take that into today, the modern, the modern world, um, if we talk now about the business model, of the leadership in action where the investment was shared across multiple small parties who then not only put their funds into this, but, um, but invested their time, their effort, their training. So they, they fully committed. This isn't just about writing a check. They really engaged. What's the feedback from those people who participated and where are they now and how has this legacy continued after uh, senior entities 2010? Well, I guess uh, it was a big uh, personal growth uh, program uh, for each of us, for all those who were involved in this expedition. I guess uh, some of them are looking at, listening to us right now. And uh, I'm sure that one of the big legacies of this expedition was to take this message not only, uh, you know, like yeah, in general to, uh, to through the media, but also through each person that took part in the expedition. So I'm sure they are also inspiring their families, their communities, uh, with this message of overcoming uh, overcoming challenges. And um, uh, some of them kept kept actually climbing mountains. Uh, of course, they, 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 I'm pretty sure they learned a lot from what you learned in the mountains and then some of them are, of course, passing this message uh, through their uh, next generations. And there's a lovely comment here from Miliana Sarmiento that says that, you know, your experience teaches people to think of others as not only of themselves, because this was utterly, utterly teamwork. The only way it was going to succeed was for everybody to support uh, the rest of the team. And that's, that's a, a very, very strong uh, final ending. Um, I think we are probably coming to the end of the presentation. Um, you have a huge audience base back in Colombia today. I think you might want to give a little message. Uh, there's family, friends, climbing partners, uh, a lot of people, so um, I think a few little words in, uh, in Spanish would be beautiful. <laughs> Gracias a todos los que me están escuchando. Eh, bueno, definitivamente este es un, un mensaje que, que yo creo que a todos los colombianos nos uh, tocó. Eh, y la verdad me alegra que después de 10 años todavía siga vigente y relevante. Y en estos momentos en los que todos están confinados en sus casas, manténgase firmes estén uh, fuertes, positivos y con buena actitud. And um, when are you booking your plane ticket back to Kathmandu? <laughs> for sure, I'll we'll go back to the Himalayas, yeah. But think, for, now, she, for now, enjoying the Alps. <laughs> but I think she's open to offers. She's available for the right, uh, for the right expedition, so... Um, Keep, keep that dream. Um, and I think for, for Carolina's day job, uh, working with Athlete365, what a lovely inspiration for all athletes. What you can achieve, you focus, your teamwork, and uh, you, know, you can succeed and pull it off, and even in tough times and tough conditions. So there's a really nice parallel for today. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Carolina Jesse uh, Ahumada. Muchas gracias, super, super talk. And um, we hope to hear more about your next big adventure. Sure. Um, Sportworks Talks will be back next Tuesday uh, and you will be on the mailing list if you have joined and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you very much. Gracias. Hasta Thank luego. you, Guy. Thank you everyone for joining. Bye.